Has public discourse in our country become a series of ideological echo chambers? Tune into cable news in any given day, and it's hard not to come to that conclusion. Visit an elite college campus, and that impression can be even more acute. No one knows that better than our next guest. In 2016, Zachary Wood found himself at the center of a political storm when, as an undergraduate at Williams College, he invited a series of controversial conservative speakers to the predominantly liberal campus to share their views. Wood faced immediate blowback from his peers, faculty, and the administration, but remained undeterred. In fact, he became a champion not simply of free speech, but of the fundamental proposition that we must actively engage with ideas and beliefs that we find disagreeable and even offensive. Wood graduated from Williams last year, and now, at 22, he has written a memoir titled Uncensored, My Life and Uncomfortable Conversations at the Intersection of Black and White America. He joins us now as part of our Chasing the Dream initiative, which focuses on poverty and opportunity in America. Zach, thanks for coming on the show, man. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So, Zach, you know, a published memoir written by a 22-year-old author, <laughs> that's not something you see every day. How did this one happen? You just snap your fingers and wish. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I was fortunate to grow up in a family of educators, to have a mother and grandmother who placed high value on reading and learning. And so my love of reading eventually led to a love of writing. And so I'd always had this interest in writing, expressing my own views and my thoughts on issues that I was interested in. And when I got to Williams College, I decided that I wanted to contribute to public discourse. And so that for me meant writing op-eds. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to write an op-ed for the Washington Post explaining some of the challenges that uh, low-income and first-generation students face when they go home for the holidays. Yeah. And that then led to the opportunity for me to share my story. Okay. So, you know, you became nationally known, at least in academic and um, political circles, because of what you did at Williams, bringing in those controversial conservative authors like Charles Murray, racialist John Derbyshire, and Susan Venker, a self-described yeah. anti-feminist. But at least three-quarters of the book is about what happened to you before then. Exactly. Uh, why? So for me, you know, in writing this, I was thinking about what are the, the experiences that have shaped who I am? And one of the biggest influences in my life was my mother. Sure. And so the first third of the book is about my experience with her. Another major influence was my father, who, from whom I've learned many valuable lessons. And so that's the second third of the book. And then the last third is about my time at Williams and how all of that kind of comes together as I become a public advocate for viewpoint diversity. So let's talk about your mother, because she is truly a prominent character in the book and what it, I would say the most important person in your life, your Absolutely. early life. Talk about that relationship and how it affected you. You know, I always knew that my mother loved me dearly. I knew that she wanted to give me the best. At the same time, I knew that our relationship was challenging and complicated. And at six or seven years old, you don't really understand what mental illness is. But my mother had schizoaffective disorder, and that's a combination of symptoms of bipolar and schizophrenia. And so what that meant was on a day-to-day -day basis, I had to negotiate and try to, to discern, was today gonna be a good day or a bad day? How was I going to respond to paranoid delusions and to hallucinations and mood swings? Yeah. How was I gonna deal with her rage and her anger? And so it forced me to really be more empathetic and compassionate at an early age. Why did you think it was important for you mm -hmm. to bring in writers to Williams who were considered homophobic, xenophobic, um, you name it, hate, hateful writers? Why did you think it was important to bring them? My mom raised me to believe that self-understanding is very important. Self-knowledge is very important. Equally important is having a kind of steadfast commitment to developing a deeper understanding of humanity. And for me, that meant that I had to understand not just the views and the values that I admire, but also the views and values that I detest mm -hmm. the views and values that I hope to resist, mm -hmm. that I hope to change. You have to engage with them. Mm -hmm. And 
you can't just engage in a mode of this has to be an adversarial kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. If you can lead with questions, mm -hmm. it opens up possibilities for you to find common ground. So for me, I thought that bringing these speakers would help me be a better change agent one day. What were the most convincing arguments that, that your peers told you as to why these speakers should not have been invited? You know, one of the most compelling arguments, counter arguments to the work that I was doing was that it was already difficult enough to be a minority on mm -hmm. campus. It was already difficult enough to be a poor student at an elite institution where the majority of the student body was fairly affluent. There are already enough challenges, mm -hmm. obstacles, microaggressions. To, to have to then bring in a speaker on top of those things that you have to deal with in interactions with your peers in the dorms and dining halls and in classes, to have someone who is espousing and saying mm -hmm. things that are deeply disturbing, yeah. that are fundamentally unsettling, that question the way in which you identify and view yourself, but you didn't listen it's to an that. added weight. What about the argument that you were legitimizing? These exactly, guys? that was another part of it, that uh, by giving them a platform, you were endorsing what they were mm -hmm. saying. You know, my approach was this. There are costs and benefits whenever you are doing mm -hmm. something that matters. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are engaged with an issue or a, a topic that truly is worth discussing, there are gonna be challenges, there are gonna be advantages and disadvantages to having tough conversations, to taking measures to achieve mm -hmm. change. I thought that there was a potential for the benefits to outweigh the Is cost. there a speaker or a type of discourse that even you would say, we can't give this a platform? Absolutely. I think Where's that? Where's that line? So, so for me, if, if the speaker is not intellectually serious, which is to say they believe in what they're saying and they believe that the world is better for it, not if I do, but if they do, and if what they're saying is not socially relevant, I'm not going to bring a flat earth. So, you know, President Trump recently announced that he would sign an executive order threatening to cut off federal funding for universities yep. that prohibit freedom of speech the way uh, he sees it. You think it's a good idea? I think it's a bad idea. I think that's a blunt instrument. Mm -hmm. I think that we want to win the argument. We want the ideas to prevail. We want to persuade people mm -hmm. that this is why free speech matters. This is not an instance in which you want to use force mm -hmm. because that opens up. It's counterproductive. Yeah, Absolutely, so. and it sets a dangerous yeah, precedent. Yeah. So you told your peers when you were in college that you, your ultimate goal was to become president of the United States. Yes, I did. Is that still the case? That is still the case. I, uh, I hope to be a public servant one day. I am interested in people. I'm interested in people's stories, helping people have better stories, and I care about the issues. All right, Zach, I wish we had more time. Thank it was a fantastic much. book. I really recommend everyone to read it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you.